Hi, this is Brad Keithley, Managing Director of Alaskans for Sustainable Budgets. Welcome to the weekly top three, the top three things on our mind here at Alaskans for Sustainable Budgets for the week of June 7th, 2022. The weekly top three is a regular segment on The Michael Duke Show. The show broadcasts on both Facebook Live and YouTube Live, as well as via streaming audio from the show's website, weekdays from 6 to 8 a.m. I join Michael weekly in the first hour of Tuesday's show from 6.25 to 7 a.m. for a discussion between the two of us about our three issues. We post the podcast of our discussion following the show on the Alaskans for Sustainable Budgets Facebook, YouTube, SoundCloud, Spotify, and Substack pages, also on the Alaskans for Sustainable Budgets website, as well as the projects page on national blog site, medium.com. You can find past episodes of the weekly top three also at the same locations. Keep in mind that in addition to these podcasts, during the week, you also can follow and participate in the discussion with us of these and other issues affecting Alaska's fiscal and economic condition by following us on the Alaskans for Sustainable Budgets Facebook page and through our posts on Twitter. This week, our top three issues are these. First, we take a look at new Senate candidate Doug Massey's position on the PFD and realize he's just another from the big government, but don't make the top 20% pay for it side of things. Second, continuing the theme, we focus on top 20%er Carl Marr's recent ADN op-ed and how it ties to Representative Zach Fields and other cut the PFD Democrats. And third, on the positive side, we discuss what we are looking for this coming cycle from legislative candidates on fiscal policy. And now, let's join Michael. All right, well, let's talk about the race with Doug Massey, um, uh, who is jumping into Showers District, which I think is weird because I think Shower is pretty much universally loved by most of his uh, most of his uh, 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 you know folks in his district, most of the voters in his district. And he's been doing a really good job, and yet all of a sudden, Doug Massey felt compelled to quit his job as a fish and wildlife uh, uh, guy and uh, and jump into this race. And the more that I look at his positions and the people who support him, the more I start to wonder how much of this is an attack by Republicans who are definitely pro-government Republicans. What, what do you say? Oh, I think this is the pushback of the Jim Jansons and the others in the top 20%. You know, we've talked a lot about getting conservatives to run against uh, pro-government uh, uh, representatives. I right. think this is the pro-government uh, uh, crowd uh, uh, pushing back and, and running against conservatives. And, and Doug Massey strikes me a lot like a Click Bishop candidate. You remember that uh, before Click uh, joined the Senate, he had been Commissioner of Labor in um, uh, Sarah Palin's administration, right, uh, and then and then resigned from that, retired from that, whatever, and uh, ran against uh, or ran for uh, for the Senate up in Fairbanks, and has turned out, you know, ran as a conservative, and you know, I'm with you and all that sort of stuff, and then turned out to be a pro government um, a Republican. Uh, Doug Massey strikes me has all the same characteristics. Massey is, you know, has been in government, uh, state government. Uh, is now stepping out of state government, is supported uh, by at least one union, the, uh, uh, the, the, the uh, uh, law enforcement uh, uh, union. You can see that uh, when you look at his, uh, at his uh, uh, supporters on, on his website. And then, but the thing that really tied it all together for me was looking at uh, Massey's website, which went up uh, on the day that, uh, that he announced. Right. Uh, and, and to his credit, I suppose, has, a, has some positions stated on, on, on key issues. And the, and the one that I immediately went to to check to see what was going on was the permanent fund. And here is his stated position on the permanent fund. I support the largest dividend Alaska can responsibly and sustainably afford. <laughs> and that, you know, you, it's indistinguishable from clicks. Right, right. Um, you know, it, it, when you see the word afford, I support the one that we can afford. Uh, you know, you have uh, Natasha von Imhoff, Click Bishop, Bert Stedman, leftover, uh, leftover PFD uh, advocate. So what I think they're trying to do, uh, the, the pro-government Republicans, what I think they're trying to do is go out and get, you know, 
the Alaska equivalent of a four-star general, uh, just like, you know, the, they, they got clicked to run. The Alaska equivalent of a four-star general who's going to say a lot of things about being conservative and against taxes and, you know, keep spending. His position on fiscal responsibility, for example, is I will work to limit and responsibly manage state spending. We must live within our means. So he'll, they'll get somebody who will say those things but when push, you know, the, the Alaska equivalent of a four-star general, but when push comes to shove, uh, they're going to be, you know, pro-government, pro-union, uh, 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 leftover uh, PFD right. uh, advocates. And I, that's, that's going to be an interesting thing. To, it's going to be an interesting race to watch. You got, a, you know, the Alaska equivalent of a four-star general in there running uh, with, a, you know, I was head of the state, you know, wildlife troopers and you know, I know government and I can get government down and, and he'll say all those things, but in the, just like click did, but when you get to the end of it, it's going to be somebody who's going to get in there and vote with Natasha and, or not Natasha anymore, but vote with Bert and click and, and Gary Stevens and the, and the other pro government Republicans that are going to, or big government Republicans rather, uh, that are going to, uh, they're going to, you know, vote to cut the PFD, use PFD cuts to, to fund government. So well, I think I think this is I, I think it's a it's an interesting race to watch. I think if Shower just holds his stuff together and, you know, and points out who this guy is and what his positions are, that it'll be Shower's race to win in that district. Uh, but it's a it's an interesting pushback by the uh, right by the by the big government Republicans, the Jim Jansen Republicans. Well, and it's interesting because I'm reading through the issues on his page and I hadn't even gotten to the permanent fund and I had already pegged him because you hit it on that first uh, first uh, point of fiscal responsibility. He says, I'll work to limit and responsibly manage state spending. We must live within our means. I do not support unnecessary taxation. You can already see him taking the position of we don't want to trade the dividend for taxation. He was already basically setting up that argument to me, that was the first red flag right there, uh, uh, right there in the beginning. And then, of course, you get into the discussion of, you know, fully supporting and fully funding public safety and, and a dividend that's responsible, sustainable and what we can afford, the leftover dividend um, and, uh, you know, and more. This looks exactly to me very much like that, like you said, the pro-government spend Republican position. And it again, it, it makes me shake my head. I mean. What's the point where people were they so offended by the things that Shower did, which was basically just state the truth as he saw it and fight for the fully funded dividend that this is what they are going to throw against him, which I think is going to be a futile effort. Like you said, I think it's his race to lose. If, if I mean, he's he's I think he's definitely got the upper hand here, but this is where they're going to they're going to waste that that uh, capital. Well, they're going to try. I mean the Alaska equivalent of a four-star general, you got a guy who's willing to run. You got him backed by the unions. You know, the unions are, are going to say, you know, we're going to be behind you just like they've been by, behind click. Um, go out there, you know, you, you got a, got a nice haircut. You're going to be able to tell a nice story, you know, put on your copper river fleece uh, uh, jacket and, uh, and go out there and tell them, you know, you're, a, you're, you're a conservative guy uh, and you, you know how to run for government in the Nat Hertz article that you, that you referenced, uh, uh, Bish, or Massey was saying uh, that, you know, he, he, uh, uh, he, he, he's like shower in the sense that he's conservative, but he can get along with people uh, and shower, you know, leaving the inference that shower is somebody who can't get along with people. Right. He's so, going to be more, um, he's going to be more collaborative in his efforts rather than there divisive, go. which is the implication. He's going to be divisive in his, <laughs> I just think but that's, I, I mean, you've got Jim Jensen, you got, you got people, you got the conservative or the, 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 the pro-government, big government Republicans out there who are pushing back and saying, uh, you know, we're going to run this guy. We, he's got an attractive resume. He's going to be able to say he's conservative. He's served in the Dunleavy administration after all. Uh, and, uh, and, you know, he's, 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 you know, wildlife troopers, you know, what could be more uh, Alaskan than that? Uh, he's been the head of wildlife troopers. I mean, you're going to, you're going to have, a, you're going to have a resume just like click did. Um, but you know, when you, when you strip all that away and look at his positions and look how the guy's going to vote, says he's going to vote once he gets to the, I mean, he's not even hiding it, right? He's not even saying that, that, you know, I'm, I support, uh, uh, you know, the traditional dividend or I support a POMV 50, 50, or he's not even saying that. I mean, he's, he's telling you, he's using the word afford 
and so you know from the outset what he's going to do um when you strip all when you strip all the four-star general stuff away uh you've got somebody who's just going to be another click bishop so it's um uh, it's, it's going to be an interesting race but i people need to find this is this is a good takeoff for the fact that people need to dig down into the positions that these people are taking there's going to be other places where you're going to look like you're going to have you know a, a pro-conservative four-star general very you know a, a, a rah-rah guy for your side uh, running in the race but when you look through the positions when you ask the hard questions uh, uh they're going to you and you strip all that away you're going to see uh when they show up down and you know what they're what they're actually going to be like and that's you know, and, and Massey's telling you from the beginning, he's not, right, even, right. He, he's not even trying to hide it. He's telling you from the beginning uh, uh, what he's going to be. Yep. Uh, they say in the, in the article uh, from Nat Hur, shower has solid conservative bona fides, but has frequently clashed with members of his Republican majority over their more moderate positions. I, I, I mean, yeah, I guess that's, that's how you look at it. You know, again, translate that into, again, pro-government, cro crony capitalism. And you mentioned Jim Jansen a couple times. For those of you who don't know, Jim Jansen is the CEO of Linden uh, Transport, one of the big companies that was throwing huge amounts of money over the years on the fight against the PFD and other things. So, again, you could see that crony capitalism mentality with the GCIs and the Lindens and other companies throwing money to prevent Alaskans from getting their PFD so that there's more government money to spend on these private contracts with these different companies, right? Well, there's more government, there's more government money to spend on these contracts, but they don't have to pay for it right? because it's coming out because they're in the top 20%. They, they pay a trivial amount uh, of their income toward government. Uh, they shove the costs off on middle and lower income Alaska families. So it's, it's a double whammy, right? They get the government contracts. They get the benefit of, of, of big government spending, but they don't have to pay for it. By using PFD cuts to shove it down, shove it off on middle and lower income Alaska families. So yeah, I, 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 you know, it, I will I, I would not be surprised. Uh, Jim Jansen, uh, by the way, is one of the one of the founders of Keep Alaska Competitive that also pushes back on any changes to oil taxes. Not even you know, let's not even discuss maybe updating oil taxes for the for the 2017 income tax or income tax act that that changed corporate taxes and and should have increased at Alaska's share. Let's, let's not even discuss those. I mean, Keep Alaska Competitive is no changes in oil taxes. We got what we want. Thank you very much. Don't change it. Don't change anything about it. Don't even talk about doing anything about it. So Jansen not only is don't, you know, cut the PFD, don't tax me, but, but cut the PFD, don't, don't revise taxes to the oil companies either. I, it, it's, it is the Alaska, it is the Alaska version of crony capitalism. And, um, and it looks, for all the world, it looks like uh, Doug Massey is uh, is the candidate that's coming from that side. He is the stalking horse in this race for that for that crowd. So just keep that in mind, Brad. Um, I guess let me just let me recycle my thoughts on this Doug Massey thing. I just find it so interesting that there are a group of Republicans who are so hell bent on growing and and on maintaining and growing the spend in state government that they they seem to have fallen so far off of the principles of what people would assume the republican label would mean for them and i just i can't wrap my brain i mean what it really has become is it's more about greed it, it's really about the worst parts of capitalism in that regard again the crony capitalism aspects of it because it is, oh, we want all these things, but we don't want to have to pay for it, and we'll make government do it because government can take everything at the point of a gun and do all this kind of stuff. It really is, I mean, it's really disheartening. Well, yeah. I mean, it's, you've got it in every state, though. I mean, sometimes it shows up as Democrats. It, one, thing, one thing I've come to, to, to learn about Alaska or think about Alaska, um, uh, particularly with respect to the PFD issue, is it's not Republican and Democrat. It is it is big government. I don't want to pay for it. Versus small government. We ought to let the people have a part of of their their of the state's resource wealth directly. That's the division. And and you find R's on on both sides of that issue. You find D's on both sides of the issue. Um, and that's really that's really the dividing line. So. 
you know, people adopt the R because Alaska is largely red, votes for uh, 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 Republican uh, uh, presidential candidates, votes for Republican gubernatorial candidates. So they, they want that R behind the name. So people will think they're conservative. People will think they're in alignment uh, with what, uh, with what uh, uh, voters believe. <laughs> when, when push comes to shove, they aren't there. I mean, Gary Stevens, in any other state, Gary Stevens would be a Democrat. In right. any other state, Click Bishop uh, would be a Democrat. But in Alaska, they call themselves ours in order to Republicans, in order to, you know, align themselves with that part of the electorate that's just looking for the the letter behind the name. Uh, but what, but when you get to the substance, they are uh, they are the big government, but I don't want to pay for it uh, crowd that you see uh, that you see in every other state. And it is a function. I agree with Rob Myers on YouTube, who said it's been a, a function. Alaska has been full of big government Republicans ever since we've had a large amount of oil money to spread around and built businesses on that principle. And I would agree with that. I mean, that 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 wealth of oil money that was being spent willy nilly is definitely uh, a big push for that. And you've got whole businesses like you were talking about, Jim Jensen and Ron Duncan and others who have built entire business models around that government spend. Of course, they don't want to they don't want to disrupt the government spend. Of course, they don't want to add more oil taxes uh, and and you know change the structure at all when things change because it would rock their boat and they don't want to do that. Yeah, and and now that we've gotten to the point where oil, I mean, where government has grown so big that oil can't pay for it anymore, they they want to find somebody else to pay for it. Right. So the PFD, you know, taxing middle and lower income Alaska families by cutting the PFD is just you know one more one more effort. To, to maintain big government, to maintain the government contracts, uh, maintain the government spend, but they don't have to pay for it. It, it is, I mean, it, it is, it, in every step of the way, it's the same thing as when we had oil, except now, instead of doing it on the, on the, on the backs of oil revenues, they're going to do it on the backs of middle and lower income Alaska families by taking their money. Uh, to uh, to continue to sustain government. There's also Massey also has some interesting uh, supporters um, as well. Some of his endorsements uh, have been very interesting. So we're going to watch that um, as we go through and and see what it looks like. But yeah, I'm I'm very concerned about where this is going in the long run. And I I think Showers I think it's his race to uh, to uh, to take for sure. But uh, it shows the it, to me it shows the desperation of these people. Uh, they understand who the real threat is, and they're going to try and throw something against that. Uh, Brad, let's uh, give me a tease for number two. We were just I was just talking. I wanted to jump right into it because I was so agitated by it. This opinion piece from uh, Karl Mars. Give me the give me the quick thumbnail before we go to break. Well, it's going to be the same thing. I mean, Karl Mars is part of the top twenty percent also, and and Karl Mars is coming at it at a slightly different direction about. Don't tax, don't tax you, don't tax me, tax those guys behind the tree, uh, middle and lower income Alaska families through uh, PFD cuts. Uh, it, it, it is, Karl Mars wrote almost exactly the same piece last December before this, before the session. He's now writing it after the session. And we'll talk about the Zach Fields connection uh, when we get back. All right, we're back now. Brad Keithley, Alaskans for Sustainable Budgets is our guest. We're talking about the uh, weekly top three and uh we're uh into number two which is the opinion piece from carl mars which is a lot of uh recycled word salad that we've seen in the past and uh more of the same like i said it could have been written off of a floor speech from zach fields uh brad your thoughts on this well it, there's a theme here the, the the title of mars's piece is this year's pfd is affordable <laughs> but not sustainable and by, by that, he means it's not affordable uh, in future years when oil revenues uh, uh, go back down, uh, are anticipated to go back down. I mean, that's what the futures market is telling us, and that's what the uh, production forecasts are telling us. As oil revenues go back down, uh, uh, this is a signal or this is, this is an indication that, that they believe they're going to go in and, uh, and, and need to raid uh, the PFD again to continue to pay uh, continue to pay for government. Mars is another one of those top 20%, you know, business leaders uh, who is out there opining that, uh, you know, the PFD, 
that's really meant for government. We just we temporarily gave it to people as dividends, but you know, government's entitled to go grab it, and, uh, and sort of like your you know stockbroker is entitled to go grab your money whenever he wants to. Uh, the government's entitled to go grab it to uh, continue to pay uh, continue to pay for government, and um, and and is it, it it's the it's the top twenty ten. Top twenty percent opinion piece that comes out, you know, periodically every six weeks or so. Sometimes Jim Jansen puts his name to it. Sometimes Karl Mars puts his names to it. Uh, but it's but it's the continuous uh, sort of uh, we can't afford the PFD, and so we need to, uh, and so we're going to need to cut it. Just get just get used to it. The thing I found really interesting about this, uh, there is a Twitter feed that uses hashtag AKLEG Alaska Legislature. Uh, and it's where most people go to post uh, uh, links or thoughts uh, about the uh, about uh, legislative matters, about political matters, about fiscal policy matters, oil matters, all sorts of things. Um, about a nanosecond after this opinion piece went up on the ADN, Zach Fields came in right behind it and posted it on uh, on the Alaska Legislature AK Ledge uh, Twitter feed. And Field's statement was a hundred percent agree with this, uh, and then he and then he linked to the uh, to the Mars column. So what's really going on here, I think, is is the Democrats are looking for cover uh, on 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 their positions. The 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 cut the PFD Democrats are looking for cover uh, on their PFD positions, um, and and they're using Mars Jansen and others in the business community to sort of give them some credibility on the issue, right? right. Sort of trying right. to say, well, this is what the business community thinks. I'm, you know, right. I'm a Democrat, but I still agree with the business community. Right. We're not quite so, what the business, we're not quite so radical. I mean, this is not a radical position. Look at all the reasonable people who are taking this position, right? Yeah, exactly right. It's, it's a feedback loop, right? It's the top 20, it's, it's the, it's the Democrats saying we want to continue to spend and and we're willing to to let you off the hook as long as you the top twenty percent off the hook, as long as you as long as you allow us to continue to use the PFD to continue big government spending. But you got to back us up on this, say the Democrats. And so the business community comes in and says, "Hey, you know the PFD is not affordable, not sustainable." Um, uh, and so you know we've got to cut the PFD. And then the and then the big government Democrats say, "Look, we got the business community behind us. You know the business community is saying we're doing." It, we're saying we're doing the right thing. So it's, it's, a, it, it's this feedback loop that's going on that became very clear when, when you saw the Mars, the Mars commentary, the top 20% business leader, business community uh, uh, commentary, and then you saw Zach Fields right behind it, you know, just sort of sitting there waiting to punch the, punch the send on his, on his, on his tweet <laughs> uh, once, uh, once, this, uh, once this commentary, uh, once this commentary came up. Yeah, no, it's definitely interesting. And I think it also points to the fact that we may need to get a little bit better organized on the pro-PFD side, the pro-smaller government side, uh, in getting our opinion pieces out there as well and having more of that out there. We need to show that there is bipartisan and uh, unified support for smaller, more limited government and for a full PFD as well. I guess there's some lessons to be learned there. I I will say one thing. What, What this really taught me, you know, some people are taking the position that there's that there's not a difference between Harriet Drummond and Zach Fields uh, in 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 their in their face off uh, in the for the House race in that district. They both got combined into into a single House district by redistricting. They're running against each other, both incumbents. It's sort of like Garen Tarr and and Forrest Dunbar, right? There is a difference. Garen Tarr, it, liberal, progressive, on a lot of issues. But she's more or less been there on the PFD issue, occasionally wanders away, but more or less be the, has been there on the PFD issue. Dunbar, the times I've seen him talk about the PFD is just perfectly fine cutting, cutting the PFD. So there is a difference in that district between Garantar and Forrest, and, and Forrest Dunbar. And actually, that's the district I live in. So I, I, will, I will be making a vote uh, based, upon, uh, based upon that. Um, and then you look over and then you look over at Harriet Drummond and Zach Fields, and there's actually a difference there. I mean, Harriet, Harriet's not been a staunch supporter of the PFD, but she's certainly not been out in front of, you know, justifying PFD cuts and, and doing this feedback loop with, uh, with business Republicans to try to rationalize uh, what they're doing. So 
I think I think that tells us even in uh, even in districts where th that are that are predominantly Democrat districts where there's Democrat on Democrat uh, 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 running uh, to be careful and look for their position on the PFD because you're going to be able to see some differences I think uh, yeah uh, between the Democrats uh, on those issues. Let's move on to number three, Brad, which is. Uh, basically, a look at uh, the candidates for the coming year. I mean, who, who, who? You know, what are what, what are we seeing, and what do you need to be looking at? Uh, Nat Hers, as I said, has a pretty good breakdown of the different races and everything else. What's your take on the field as it sits right now? Well, I'm going to be looking at candidates, uh, looking through their websites, listening to their positions, uh, and I'm going to be listening for their position on the PFD because I think that is. I think that's where the rubber meets the road in terms of whether you're looking out for middle and lower income Alaska families or you're part of this, you know, crony capital uh, the society that we've built up in this state. And I think a good a good place to look for for their position is uh, whether how they react to the fiscal policy working group uh, proposal that was put forward uh, uh, last year by some of the most conservative legislators. Uh, in in the uh, uh, Alaska legislature and some of the most uh, progressive legislators in the in the Alaska legislature, and I think that fiscal policy working group is a is a good. It, it wasn't it wasn't used this last session, but I think it's a good starting point for for coming together on a on a fiscal policy uh, that that uh, that can set a a, a good way forward uh, way forward for the state. It talks about a POMB fifty fifty. It talks about constitutionalizing. Uh, 50 50 and I think that really sets I think that's a really solid foundation to to set for going forward um, uh, it's it Mike shower was part of uh, and I and I have spoken highly of uh, of the outcome of the fiscal policy working group the recommendations made she Shelley Hughes uh, was uh, was part of that group and others and so I think that's I think that's a really good foundation I'm going to be looking for candidates that say look We've got to we've got to come to a resolution on this issue. We can't move Alaska forward until we have a resolution on fiscal policy. I'm going to support. I'm looking for a candidate that's going to say I'm going to support the the, the outcome of the fiscal policy working group, and I'm going to work to adopt that and to enact that uh, in coming uh, legislatures. And remember, part of that is to constitutionalize POMB 5050. So, you know, if Doug Massey had said that, uh, we would have had a whole different conversation at the beginning. Uh, but that's not what he said. I mean, he he said he's for an affordable PFD, which is, you know, way off to, to one what, side. Of whatever's left over, essentially. Right. But 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 candidates that I think uh, uh, I think merit uh, close evaluation and support going forward are those that are going to talk about uh, supporting the the outcome of the fiscal policy working group. And again, just to be clear, part of that fiscal policy working group includes solutions that include just for the people in the chat room. Uh, not only uh, uh, reevaluation, not only cuts to government, but also reevaluation re of the oil taxation structure and some sales taxes. And it's a, it's a holistic approach, right? It's a little bit of everything. It is. I mean, it it does. It talks about explicitly talks about uh, spending or cuts in government spending. It explicitly talks about POMB fifty fifty on the PFD. It explicitly talks about constitutionalizing. Uh, POMB 5050, and then it talks about some uh, substitute revenue sources to fill in the, the the remaining gaps between what government spending is and what uh, and 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 the revenues provided by uh, existing oil taxes and uh, 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 or traditional revenue sources and uh, and what's and and the other 50 percent of the POMB after you take out after you take out the dividend, and those other taxes can come in the form of oil taxes or they can come in the form of of, of individual taxes, like the P PFD cuts have been, uh, are an individual tax. Um, so it's it, it doesn't it's not you know it doesn't say raise oil taxes by two percent or it doesn't right. have any particulars in it uh, that that tie people's hands. But it is the general philosophy of a, some government spending cuts, tying down uh, uh, P the PFD at POMB fifty fifty, which involves frankly some cuts. Uh, in the PFD, and then some new revenues or some substitute revenue sources to uh, to fill in the gap, and and it's a it's a little bit of everything uh, to get to a solution that uh, that then can we can lock in on and uh, and go forward from there. 
So basically, the questions we should be asking these new candidates should revolve around all the aspects of the fiscal policy working group plan, and that would give us a better uh, that would give us a a little bit of a better uh, look at where they stand on most, uh, if not all, of these issues. Brad Keithley, final thoughts here. Last thirty seconds. Well, I think it's more than just the. I think I think the question is. Do you support the fiscal policy working group, the outcome of the fiscal policy working group and the recommendations? And and hopefully the answer to that is yes. That's the starting point for me, for a candidate. For those of you who showed up late and missed the fact that Brad was talking, was criticizing uh, Jim Jensen for blocking any changes to the oil and gas tax uh, or oil and gas uh, uh, tax uh, scheme. Harold's in the chat room criticizing you for not talking about, you know, changing the tax. Uh, you missed that, Harold. He was talking about that earlier. And, of course, again, that's part of the fiscal policy working group is a plan. And, in fact, the number that he uh, the number that I think was dialed in there is somewhere in the 200 to 300 million dollar range for new taxation to come out of oil. Uh, plus, again, uh, something commensurate coming out of the private sector with some form of tax as well. But again, it's all on the table at this point. Everything's on the table. Yeah, exactly right. Uh, uh there are, I mean, people have talked about $400 million coming from oil. The, the total new revenues uh, that the fiscal policy working group uh, outlined was 500 to $700 million in, uh, in new revenues. That was based upon the revenue forecast uh, uh, at the time the working group was, was, uh, was, was trying to come together. Uh, the revenue forecast has changed. Uh, that likely would change the need for uh, additional revenues. Uh, oil could take up a big uh, a big chunk of that uh, uh, updating uh, the oil tax code. But the point is, I mean, the point is you've got candidates out there like Doug Massey who are going to be, you know, Jim Jansen Republicans, big government Republicans, uh, who are going to say, let's take it out of the PFD. We don't need to tax anybody else. Let's just take it out of the PFD. It's, you know, free government money, and uh, and we'll just use it for good things that, uh, that, that we, the 60 down in... Uh, down in Juneau, the 60 plus one down in Juneau decide we're going to use it for, uh, and, and we don't need to tax anybody. That's, that's what, that's what, uh, Massey's going to say. So, uh, you know, you, you've got to find people who are willing to, to recognize that not the right solution, that that just pushes the burden back on, uh, middle and lower income Alaska families and that the right solution is one that spreads the burden out. And by spreading the burden out, makes the burden on any given individual or any given industry relatively small. And and gives everybody skin in the game so that, again, all of a sudden that top 20 percent, when they have to start forking out money for these big pro-government, uh, all this big government spend, all of a sudden they'll be like, whoa, 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 wait a second. Uh, it's going to cost me that much? Maybe we shouldn't be yeah, spending exactly. that much. Exactly. Um, yeah. and, and again, this is... Uh, this again is uh, the biggest problem with this whole situation is is that uh, you know they want to avoid all of those things. They don't want to they don't want to see any of it. And the problem, of course, is they've built all these businesses. And I've said this many times before, but I'll say it again: when you've built an entire business model around the government spend, uh, I mean, how private sector are you really when that's what you've built it on? And you spend millions of dollars trying to sway the public interest for it in the other direction for more government spending how much of a small business or a private sector business are you really the big ones are probably doing just fine it somebody said earlier i think it was kevin mccabe said earlier something about the small business people are probably feeling it in the uh, in a whole different way the small businesses who don't have these huge government contracts are probably feeling it in a small way brad yeah, exactly right and that's you know it icer's study icer's uh, 2016 study of the PFD found that, or found the, the various fiscal solutions, that of all of the solutions, taking the PFD was the hardest on Alaska business, the hardest on uh, overall employment, the hardest on uh, overall income, uh, because Alaskans, by and large, plow that money back into uh, back into Alaska and into uh, Alaska businesses. Uh, but it's not, the difference is individual Alaskans decide where to spend that money as opposed to keeping it in government and then allowing the 60 plus one to decide where that, where that money goes. Right. And, 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 you know, you get the Jim Jansons and the, and the, and the, 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 the GCIs, they don't want the 60, the, they don't want Alaskans 
Alaskan individuals deciding where to put that money. They want the 60 plus one deciding where to put that money because they can lobby them. They right. can go down to Juno and say, oh, it's no, easier to it's influence for the children yeah. or it's it, for, you know, it's for the elderly or right. you know, please just, you know, just, just put some of that money toward, uh, toward, toward my business. It's cheap marketing. I mean, if you look at it that way, right, it's easier to influence 60 plus one than it is to influence 700,000 people. So they can do it all. It gets a, it concentrates their power in that regard. This is another reason why I was so infuriated uh, with this last go around of the PFD that you saw all those chambers of commerce sending letters down there supporting a smaller dividend. Uh, if I was a member of a chamber of commerce, especially a small business, I would be wanting to burn somebody's house down. I definitely would have pulled my membership over something like that because you're just helping the big boys not the smaller businesses who make up, you know, 80% of the chambers of commerce. Uh, down to less than a minute here, Brad, your final thoughts. And and who was one of those who wrote uh, an op-ed uh, in support of the chambers of commerce and opposing the PFT? Jim Jansen, Keep yeah. Alaska Competitive. Yep. I mean, so it, this all goes in a circle, and it's all being driven by those who, are, who want to keep the money uh, inside government and control of where it's going by their control over the legislature. Yeah, it's uh, it's absolutely infuriating and frustrating. Uh, Brad, thanks for bringing this up and bringing this to our uh, attention. Enjoy the beautiful weather wherever you're at and uh, enjoy broadcasting outdoors. I'm jealous. I'm just a little bit jealous in my dark hole here. <laughs> so uh, it's good good to hear from you. And thanks for coming. Uh, thanks for coming on board today. Michael, as always, uh, thanks for having me, and uh, and I'll send some of this weather your way. I'll try to send some of this weather your you way. You bet. You bet. All right. Thanks, Brad. Appreciate you coming on board and joining us today. Well, that's a wrap for another week's edition of the Weekly Top 3 from Alaskans for Sustainable Budgets. Thank you again for joining us. Remember that you can find past episodes on our YouTube, SoundCloud, Spotify, and Substack pages, and keep track of us during the week on Facebook and Twitter. This has been Brad Keithley, Managing Director, Alaskans for Sustainable Budgets. We look forward to you joining us again next week on the Weekly Top 3.